let's start, Arjun, with our mm -hmm. sort of basic sort of, one of the big questions is, are these technologies real, right? And right. Even, even with that, are they real, it's the discussion of what type of technology, right? Because when we're talking about renewable energy or something where people are, they understand, oh, well, you use wind, you use solar, you use uh, geothermal, which you're in essence tapping into resources that are renewable, if you will. The wind's always going to be there. The sun is always going to come up, right? right? There's always going to be some heat being built within the earth. Right. But there's these other forms of technology, these hidden energy technologies, as we've often discussed. Are we tapping into the ether? Are we generating this uh, energy through, I mean, like with Tawari's uh, right. device, where it was almost like it was canceling out certain physical laws, so it was doing things in different ways. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about uh, even magnetics and right. so forth? So that's, that's, I think, where the discussion starts, is like there's a lot of different types of these technologies. Are they real? Are they working? Right. Is another question. Um, in my opinion, yeah, and based on everything we've looked at, no doubt that these technologies exist and that they've existed for a long time. The ones I've looked into um, deal with extracting energy from space time or, mm -hmm. you know, in quantum physics, they always refer to it as the void, you know. Um, you know, 99.9% .9 of an atom is empty space and they just thought it was empty space the void there's nothing going on and in there now it's firmly established that there is something going on in there there are electromagnetic fluctuations in there there's energy in there right. you know we're sitting in a sea of energy and that's undisputable the next question is can this energy be extracted and used for propulsion for you know electrical generators or whatever and um, it turns out they can um, uh, there's a great example here, we can screenshot it, um, and I want to go through a number of these. Let me just pull it up here. Well, while you're pulling up that clip, I mean, another interesting part of this is the idea, too, that it's like, when we look at propulsion, when we look at can the energy within these atoms, can it be used for the current ways that we believe energy need to be, needs to be used when creating things like cars, when, you know, powering a light bulb and so forth, like, does it, we are under this assumption that you must take an electrical wire, provide the current to that particular uh, piece of equipment, and have that provide the energy. But if this energy is all around, could we even change entirely the way devices, like for example, even when talking about a car, we talk about exploding things, we talk about propulsion, we talk about moving and pushing things forward with some of the energy technologies and so forth that are out there and when looking at the reality that we're sitting in a sea of energy at the end of the day, you start to think more about potentially the manipulation of that energy as opposed to the collection of that energy. Do we need to collect that energy into something to then transmute it into a purpose? Or can we just manipulate that energy in a different way to actually move things forward. That's a little bit of an abstract thought. <laughs> you know, we can definitely dive back and go into, you know, some of what you were just pulling up there. But I wanted to kind of put that out there because it's one of those things too. It's like thinking beyond what we currently do when it comes to energy and getting into what else could potentially be possible other than just having to collect it. But let's, right. I'm assuming you got that clip there. Yeah, no. So like I said, like it's well established that you know, there is what's known as the ether, um, and it, it's full of electromagnetic energy. We're sitting in a field of energy. The only question comes into account is, can we tap into that? And there are multiple papers that have been published over the decades showing that, yes, we can tap into that. And, um, uh, and I have an example here, a paper published in um, the journal Foundations of Physics in 2001 that show um, uh, it actually um, deals with a machine that the authors invented called the motionless electromagnetic generator that takes energy from the space-time, as they called it, and put out 20, more, 20 times more energy than what was in, in, inputted. Right. Um, and you can also see a patent around the same time this study was published from multiple authors of this published study for the motionless electromagnetic generator. Um, so that's just one example. Here's a great video from um, Dr. Brian O'Leary, um, a Princeton physics professor and a NASA astronaut, a NASA astronaut 
um, on what he had to say and based on his research of whether or not they're real or not. I started to examine the breakthrough solutions and much to my surprise these concepts have been proven in hundreds of laboratories throughout the world and yet they have not really seen the light of day. So there's another example and again there this there are tons of studies showing that this is possible and you know just to hammer this home here's another great clip from um, Hal Putoff. Hal Putoff is um, he is a world-renowned physicist who's done a lot of work in the Department of Defense with new energy technologies. He's actually the co-founder of the Stargate program, mm -hmm. who, uh, you know, remote viewing we discussed right. in a previous episode. Um, his background is well vetted. Um, he's got a number of published papers on this. If anyone wants to search his name and his published research, here's a you know great little clip from him. Uh, these are not just uh, fringe scientists with science fiction ideas, uh, but the basically the, these are kind of mainstream ideas being published in mainstream physics journals and being taken seriously by mainstream um, military and uh, NASA type funders. So that really goes to show who's really interested in this kind of technology. And here's another interesting thing he said. Again, this is big military stuff. All this research is being done within mm -hmm. the Department of Defense, therefore it's classified, right? Right. Listen to this. I've been taken out on aircraft carriers by the Navy and shown uh, what it is that we have to replace if we have new energy sources to uh, provide new fuel methods. Um, <clears throat> of course, NASA is funding some of these breakthrough propulsion physics ideas. The Air Force, various labs in the Air Force are pursuing um, fundamental studies on these kind of exotic ideas. Interesting. What's he, so what's he referring to fully there? He's saying that he's been taken out and basically shown what has to be replaced if new energy technologies come out. So, so is he talking about like infrastructures? Yeah, the oil, you know, and right. this and that, basically so much. Basically if new energy technologies come out, it collapses everything. Yeah. You know, they lived in an oil-based economy. If something replaces that, it's it's yep. game over, right? Well, and so. I think this is, there's a couple of interesting things in the last little bits that we played there. It's like, the, so first off you have, okay, well, a lot of times people, I guess, are kind of under the assumption, it's like, okay, well, you can never have more energy that you, so if you put a certain amount of energy into a system, you're always going to have loss somewhere, right? right? And even when we talk about Tuari's device, which we should get into here a little bit, but when we talk about that, I mean, all he was doing was canceling out the need for a loss within a system. Yeah, right? and he was, yes. Yeah. So that was a big thing. But that's one thing is there's, there's been this long held assumption, which people are saying like, oh, you know, um, what's happening in, in this, in, with these new technologies is it's like rewriting. It's, can, it's like rewriting all of the stuff going on within the science world and, and the people just don't want to accept it. Well, it's like the ideas aren't that crazy. Like it doesn't, it's not like it, it's just like throws out all of our previous science. It's more so it's just like we're kind of making small adjustments. We're adding to, we're changing some of the understanding yeah. of the widely regarded science when it comes to things like energy and closed energy systems and so forth. And the laws of physics don't take into account for the fact that space is not empty. It's full right. of energy, you know? Right. So that we need to adjust the laws of physics to take that into account. And John Wheeler, a famous quantum physicist, said, no point is more central than this, that space is not empty, it is the seat of the most violent physics. Mm -hmm. You know, even Tesla, here's a great quote from Tesla, ere many generations pass, our machinery will be driven by a power obtainable at any point in the universe. This idea is not novel. So, I mean, as he said, it's a mere question of time when men will succeed in attaching their machinery to the very wheel work of nature. Mm -hmm. And he just showed those video clips and he gave you a screenshot of the study. Yeah. There are multiple clips like that, multiple studies that clearly show this technology is real and it's possible. Yeah, and, it, and a lot of great thinkers have been tapping into slash, they know that the technology is available, but it leads back to, I mean, one of the forms of suppression when it comes to this stuff is obviously you look at our economic system, you look at certain bits of the elite or certain um, you know, hands that are trying to maintain the system as it is, and you could take that and you could say, oh, well, you know, they're, they're suppressing a whole bunch of it. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, to some extent, 
when you look at the elite as it is and, and trying to maintain a certain system, they would hide or suppress these technologies. But the reality of the situation is you can take the average person off the street, which I've done this many, many times, and I've said, okay, w th these new technologies are available. I mean, we could basically implement them, and once implemented, they could potentially provide energy limitless Right. Uh, uh, with clean. under a limitless potential that's clean yeah. for you know many 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 years to come without having to touch them, and then the first thing that usually comes is that sounds great, but what's going to happen to the jobs associated with this? What's going to happen yeah. to that? It, so it starts to make you realize that it's not just the elite that's talking about this, but it, or that that's suppressing this in a way, but it's the average person and also the way they think about it and like the <laughs> system at hand yeah. is designed to operate in a particular way. Exactly, and you know it's interesting you say that because I was. I was in the gym the other day, yeah. and I came across a mechanical engineer. Yeah. And I, since he was a mechanical engineer, I, anytime I come across a mechanical engineer, I always ask them about over-unity devices, yeah, like yeah. free energy devices. And he instantly was not open to it at all. What did he say? He, I'm, I'm just like, oh, have you heard of um, over-unity devices? And he's like, yeah. And he kind of gave it a laugh, like he was brushing it off. But he didn't completely ridicule it, but he was like, you could tell he just wouldn't even have any discussion about it, right? Which is common, and it's confusing to me because clearly, this is like that clip we showed with Hal Putoff, and there's tons of published research. It's not fringe science; it's it's established, and it's just I I guess these people just don't learn about it in school, and they don't yeah. do any further research, and they're made to believe that it's not possible because we're bound by the laws of physics, which will never change. There's yeah. that for sure. That's a huge portion of it, you know, how we're taught about things, right? Yeah. But then there's also the discussion of, like we talked about in, in Tuesday's CE Insight, which if you're listening on the podcast and you're not signed up to receive the insight, it's basically an email that I send out every uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, kind of like run, like these big rundowns of everything that's kind of going on, um, big reflections of, of things that are happening at the current times and hitting on uh, some, some key content points that allow us to dive deeper into these subjects. But it's essentially like your it's your conscious media report. It's your conscious news report. Um, but I was I was talking about it in the Tuesday version of that, uh, which actually just came out today. It was this idea that. Um, you know, we have these ideas come forward, whether it's talking about free energy, whether it's talking about um, things within consciousness, the quote unquote new age movement, as we discussed last week in a little bit of detail in which we will again on, on uh, this upcoming Thursday. It's just this idea that it's like, there are people who see these things, see these technologies, do the research like we have. Like we've spent a lot of time over, you know, the last 10 years digging into the, you know, the, the legit from the not so legit and, and really using discernment to kind of see what's actually going on. We've had contact with real inventors. We've gone and seen their devices. You know, we've gone through this whole gauntlet of, of experience, whereas some people, you know, they watch a, a video on YouTube of an overunity device or they, they follow a particular inventor who may not actually have anything or whatever it may be. But, but go around as if, you know, these technologies are 100%, over unity is 100%. Look, here's a video on YouTube, here's a video on YouTube. UFOs are 100% real, here's, here's a video on YouTube, here's a video on YouTube. It's like, there are, like, YouTube's a platform. You know, the internet is a platform. Yeah. There are things that are true and there's things that are not so true. And the bigger a subject gets, the more willingness sometimes there is for us to kind of just be like, oh, well, you know, just look at this. Here's a perfect example. Here's a perfect example. Here's a perfect example. Here's a perfect example. But really, those aren't good examples. So it's like that mechanical engineer that you're talking about, I kind of feel I get where he's coming from, where it's yeah. like, nah, you know, it's like, because there probably are a million and one videos on YouTube that are so easy to kind of just debunk. And a lot of times that's where people are getting their information. And mm -hmm. the challenge there is revealed in the fact that whether you're on the I believe it or I don't believe it side of the argument, you probably haven't done the proper research to realize what's actually going on.